we are so grateful that yesterday we were able to, we had um, the disciples show up for our, um, <laughs> the disciples showed up for the, uh, for the many retreats, the many retreats. And so you will hear some more information as it's upcoming. We had a wonderful um, conversation uh, with regards to the five-year plan and um, the structure and the style in which it's going to be taken. So you will hear more information about where we, how we want to gather your uh, input, the entire congregation's input, um, a little bit after Lent. So we'll pick up this conversation um, after Lent so that we might finalize uh, and put, pull that together. Okay. I'll just draw on your attention to some of our announcements on the back of the bulletin. On to this after church today, we will have the um, the soup Sunday, where you go downstairs and you can purchase your soup is for uh, soup with the pop and dessert, and that is for the youth. Our youth is having its fundraiser. Um, also, our marriage ministry. I understand we uh, we have um, there's something going wrong. So for those who don't know, February Valentine's Day is Friday. And you all don't know that. Um, but we have been planning that for our marriage ministry. And that our married couples are asked to join us for brunch on that Saturday, um, this coming Saturday, February the 15th at 11 a.m. Um, the cost is $25 a per, per couple. $25 per couple? Guys, where can you find anything cheaper than that? <laughs> Except maybe at home. I'm going to make that all these days. <laughs> At least you make her happy and not make her mad. But so we're asking that please make sure you see Sister Carla Body or myself. Um, if you are interested, we need that count today. Even if you're not sure, even if we just haven't paid for it, just give us that count today and you can provide the payment later. All right? Um, also, our soul food um, potluck will be next week, Sunday, next Sunday. So seeing out for that, I'm not sure where the sign, we usually had a sign up sheet in the past. I'm sure it's out there um, somewhere so that we are all not bringing oxtails. <laughs> we are planning on getting you out. Um, once a month, typically now, just looking at the fourth Sunday, um, there, will, there is going, there's a breakfast club. It's not just a breakfast, it's a breakfast club where we'll be meeting with our junior high and high school youth. Um, and that is, uh, and myself, meeting with them in the lower kitchen area, where actually I actually uh, pulled together a, a Sunday school lesson for them. So please remember that, and we have been working on, we started something last month, and so we'll be working on it again um, this coming February the 23rd. Also, please be mindful that we are also the host for the um, Ohio Commission for the Dr. Martin Luther King Oratorical Contest. That contest will take place on February the 22nd. Um, if you're inter if you would like to um, volunteer to assist that day, we need all type of um, assistance. Please make sure that you you, you can uh, see me for that. Also, in conjunction with the contest, is the Vernon and Helen Miller Scholarship Fund invites all of our seniors here, our high school seniors, um, to submit an essay about how Jesus changed my life. Um, and submit that as well. This is for the scholarship of $2,000. So please make sure you adhere to that for that registration deadline. It's even though it says February the 14th, we will extend, uh, we'll, we'll extend that to next Sunday. Amen? Amen. 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 As we move, um, As we move forward, there will be, you know, one of the things that we actually talked about, too, is uh, yesterday was how we actually communicate um, to members of the church family. And so we want to still continue to invite those who want to serve as in the music ministry as well as in the uh, prayer team ministry uh, so that uh, we will have enough. But I also want to appeal to those of you for something for us to pray upon. Christian education is one of our... Um, hallmark here where we where it is often the time where we utilize to preach to preach and uh, preach God's word and to tell about the goodness of Jesus Christ. 
through study, through going through the word. And so um, we, our sister Carla Body has been our superintendent. And so at this time, she wants to step down. And so we need someone who will be willing to come in and organize our Sunday school, our Sunday school piece. So if I uh, ask that you all pray about that, and if this is something some that you uh, feel called to do, please um, uh, stop by and, and leave me a note or and let me know in some kind of way that this may be something that you are uh, being feeling called to do. All right. Let us, uh, won't, you, won't you join with me in a word of prayer? Most gracious and heavenly Father, we are just so thankful just because you are who you are, and you've given each one of us life this morning. Life and a chance to get up and an opportunity for us to come into the house of the Lord and to lift up your name. So, Father, we come already because we come with some level of praises because of how you brought us through this week and the blessings that you have given us. So, Father, help us to even understand that the way we define the blessing is the fact that God is in each and every one, the one that's small, the one that gives us the opportunity to think, and the one that even gives us some time to gain some insight. But we thank you for that. And right now, Father, we just ask that you ready our hearts and our minds so that we might receive your word. In the receipt of your word, let us be able to go out and still spread the good news of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. And as always, Father, I ask that you move me out of this so that your word may be magnified. But Father, maybe those things, just one thing that you have for your, for your people today, it may just be that one little piece that is important to them. But we ask, Father, that you, that you, ready their hearts and their minds to receive it. In your name we pray, amen. Amen. In the book of Acts, chapter 16, verses 16 to 25, I want to read this again. It says, Paul in the Bible is in the prison. Once when they were going to the place of prayer, so once we were going to the place of prayer, we were met by a female slave who had a spirit by which she predicted the future. She earned a great deal of money for her owners by fortune telling. She followed Paul and the rest of us shouting, These men are servants of the Most High God who are telling you the way to be saved. She kept this up for many days. Finally, Paul became so annoyed that he turned around and said to the spirit, In the name of Jesus Christ, I command you to come out of her. And at that moment, the spirit left her. When her owners realized that their hope of making money was gone, they seized Paul and Silas and dragged them into the marketplace to face the authorities. They brought them before the magistrates and said, These men are Jews and throwing our city into an uproar by advocating customs unlawful for us Romans to accept or to practice. The crowd joined in the attack against Paul and Silas, and the magistrates ordered them to be stripped and beaten with rods. After they had severe, been severely flogged, they were thrown into the prison. The jailer was commanded to guard them carefully. When he received these orders, he put them in the inner cell and fastened their feet to the stocks. About midnight, Paul and Silas were praying singing hymns to God, and the other prisoners were listening to them. Suddenly, there was such a violent earthquake that the foundations of the prison were shaken. At once, all the prison doors flew open, and everyone's chains came loose. Well, this morning, I want to just preach and teach to you on the subject of at midnight. This passage tells us about a woman who was a slave and who had the job of being a fortune teller. And just like so many of us who do this in this life, we find ourselves putting our, putting our faith in something else other than God to the point that we give it more value of the concept of truth. In some versions of the scripture, they call the spirit that is being evoked, and that is of a demonic spirit. 
But you see, this demon had her believing that if she could tell you about your future, that would be some power that she could hold. Well, the slave girl worked for someone who was getting paid for her telling the story. In essence, she was in debt to someone else who literally owned her. But as the story is told, we find out that here she is following up behind Paul, and Paul gets frustrated, so frustrated, enough that he prays. For it tells us that Paul became so annoyed that he turned around and said to the Spirit, in the name of Jesus Christ, I command you to come out of her. And at that moment, the Spirit left her. Think about this. When was the last time you prayed with such aggression? When was the last time you were so frustrated that you prayed? And when was the last time you prayed with such frustration? But have you ever just said a prayer that, that lacks the, re the religious decorum, one that is just raw, just plain, because you just needed it right then and there? But we also see here in this scripture that she knew that Paul was covered by God. You see, her owner saw that this testimony of Paul and how he professed himself as a follower of Jesus Christ. And they quickly acknowledge that Paul is messing with their money. They said, somebody is messing with my money. And because of this, just like any hustler who sees that somebody's trying to get in on his territory, the owners then went after Paul and Silas, confronted him, roughed him up, and then dragged him into the marketplace, somewhere which is all out in public, for now we have Paul and Silas who are clearly against what is the norm of the time. And their situations get worse because now the police come, arrest them, because they say they are disturbing the peace. See, have you ever been in a situation where your, where your simple just confession of who God is has been an interruption to the peace in the land? Have you ever felt that your belief in God has been a contradiction to the situation that lies amongst you? And have you ever felt that the peace that you have interrupts the world's interpretation of what peace is? Well, you see, the, the police had accused Paul and Silas of even disrupting the current law and order. You see, I'm a fan of the law and order series. Anytime that the law and order series comes on, I'm watching it. Whether it's special victim unit, whether it's criminal intent, or whether it is the regular series. But there's one thing that I always notice about the law and order series, is that they are always running after making sure that they keep the law and order intact. See, when I think about it, though, even more so, in this sense, this law and order was one who was growing after making sure that the legalism and the laws of the land were kept intact. When I think about this law and order, I think about the rules that were put in place to control and to be power upon certain people. When I think of law and order, I also think about what is prohibiting me from serving God. So in this case with Paul and Silas, who are, a, who are accused of interrupting the law and order, they are accused of disrespect, disrespecting and disobeying the rules of this society. And because their confession of, re, of faith has reached to something far greater than what the fortune teller could tell them, the mob and the police and all the folks who were surrounding them, they were out of love. Because how can you say that something is greater than what we have in place on this earth? And because of their confession of faith had reached to something far greater than that, we have to get to a point sometime where we have to understand that sometimes the law and order just ain't right. Mm. right. Mm. How is it that we can confess and perfect that there is something higher, much higher, that gives us peace instead of what the world defines as happiness. Mm -hmm. So now, because the people who are out for blood can't possibly, can't possibly say that, they were in such a rage, they were in such a rage that they went and pulled off the clothes of Paul and Silas and 
and, and, and order that they have this public meeting. One time to think about it. The judge went along with it. Sound like something that happened this week. Let me say that again. Sound like something that happened this week. So after they punished them, they put them in jail. And they put them so far up into the jail that they had no opportunity or chance of getting out. And they even thought they were so much more of a threat that they put the chains on their feet and on their wrists. Paul, silent, peaceful men who had committed no crime were put, were, were put in chains designed for holding the most dangerous prisoners in high security. But watch this. In verse 25, he said, About midnight, Paul and Simon were praying and singing hymns to God. And the other prisoners were listening to them. Suddenly there was such a violent earthquake that the foundation of the prison was shaken. And at once all the prison doors fell open and everyone's chains came loose. You see, there's something about the word midnight. It had so much mystery in, in, in that time. You remember that uh, every time there's a lot of movies that come out or a lot of songs that have the name Midnight in it. I even think that last night had a song that had Midnight in it. <laughs> there's movie titles such as The Dark Side of Midnight, The Midnight Cop, The Midnight Cowboy, Midnight in Paris, and it goes on and on and on. But you see, there's so many other things that fall along the lines with the midnight feel. I had a friend about 20 years ago who passed of cancer. And I remember going into her house and visiting her at one time. And she told me, she said, there's something about midnight that makes me feel uncomfortable. She said, I got all, all throughout the day. I got the kids that are running around here. She said, but something happens to me at midnight. You see, midnight is the very thing that bridges one day to another. Midnight connects one year to the next year. Midnight joins one day, one decade to another decade. Midnight is when the absolute last time that your bills are due. Midnight is the, la the absolute time when your, pay your paycheck kicks in. And midnight is the time in which that sale that you have been watching all day long is over. But when, what does midnight have to do with the circumstances that surround this day? For you see, it is at midnight when we deal with the dead of night and in the break of day. It is at midnight when we deal with the end of the cycle as also becomes the dawn of a new day. It is at midnight when we find ourselves dealing with the worries of the world or the possibility of what tomorrow may bring. It is at midnight when we start to feel the heavy load of our circumstances, and it is at midnight when we feel the heaviness of our burden. It is at midnight when we feel the tossing, the turning, and the restlessness. So can't you imagine that at this point, Paul and Silas, they have been taking beatings and bruisings and tortures all throughout the day. But we can also imagine that they may not have known what was coming next. But there was something that was very interesting here. It was then at midnight where there was the possibility of what could happen would be the same thing that would happen to us at midnight. Feeling of the heaviness of chains that were hovering over our spirit. The chains of fear, the chains of insecurity, the chains of discouragement, the hesitancy that we may have, and the mere shackle of a troubled mind. It is the time when you are unsure of the future. It is the time when the doctor doesn't have an answer, when the bank won't answer, and when your friends and family can't even answer you. Midnight is the time in which we just try to dodge the next blow. But if we keep looking at the scripture and we see now what Paul and Silas did at midnight, do you see that that's the same thing is happening? 
When we see it as a circumstance, it is the very thing that draws us closer to Jesus Christ. Amen. Because here's what we know about our circumstances. Circumstances create opportunities for God to show his real life. Amen. Circumstances cause us to fall to the feet of Jesus Christ. Circumstances cause us to draw near to God and to our Savior because they give us reason to press into the very presence of the Almighty Himself. Circumstances remind us when God was there before. Amen. And if you call yourself a believer, you know that God is going to cover you, comfort you, and answer you every yeah. time. Yeah. For here is the most interesting part. That despite their dismal situation, at midnight, they prayed. They sang songs. And they prayed and sang so loud that the other prisoners heard the word. See, there's something even more powerful about just that despite what you are going through, despite what the law and order of the world tells us, despite the fact that you feel like the world has told you that you disobeyed something, that you have all these chains that are all around you, that you still have an opportunity to praise God. See, they were praising God. And the Spirit of God worked its way through others so that they could experience the goodness that they were experiencing. So how powerful is God himself? How powerful is God when we praise him in our daily life? But God is so powerful that there was just a couple of people who was praising him. Just a couple of folks that was praising him would cause an earthquake without warning. I don't know about you, but I've had some situations that take place and I don't know it's coming. For the person who likes to be in control, yeah. that's always something. <laughs> but if we look at verse 26, when it says the word suddenly, in the messenger interpretation of this scripture, it uses the wording without warning. For suddenly means that without warning, the praise can come on. For oftentimes, praise cannot be predicted. It cannot be structured. It cannot be dictated. And it cannot be planned. Suddenly means that God will provide for you at the time without warning. And warning and it is going to be a transformative time. One thing that we've noticed is that when we start to praise God, we praise God with a mighty praise. And there's something else that happens here. The praise flows beyond you. Some of y'all want to keep it to yourself. <laughs> y'all always want to keep stuff to yourself so nobody else be able to experience. But when it's real praise, that's coming. God is always has always been mindful about the fact that it's going to overflow to somebody else. You see, I can recall a time, yeah, I did this, when I was running some bath water in the bathtub. Mm -hmm. And I got so distracted, I, I, I got so distracted that the water kept running for so long that it started to run over. It wasn't until the water had reached the threshold of the bathroom door when I realized that the tub was overflowing. And because it was overflowing, the water had touched everything in its presence. It had no order to its flow. It touched the towel that was on the floor. It touched the clothes that was on the floor. It soaked the rug that was on the floor. And it even began to seep into some areas of the floor. The bath water had overflowed. And see, sometimes when we praise God with the bare abundance that you have gotten to your midnight moment, you have gotten into a midnight hour that you find yourself praising God and it's going to overflow to those folks who you don't even know that's in your presence. Okay. Amen. Amen. Right. Have you ever been blessed by someone else who's having a praise moment? And have you ever felt the Holy Spirit move and touch you with something else, when someone else was having their own personal worship? Psalm 63, 5 and 7, it says, I overflow with praise when I come before you for the anointing of your presence 
satisfy me like nothing else. For you are such a rich banquet of pleasure to my soul. I lie awake each night thinking of you and reflecting on how you helped me like a father. I sing through the night under the splendor shadow, offering up to you my songs of delight and joy. You see, the very praise that Paul and Silas, they were praising God, and the Holy Spirit touched everything that was around them. So I'm here to tell you one thing. You may be able to control what you do, but you cannot control what the Holy Spirit Amen. is going to do. Amen. Amen. And because of that, and because God was the creator of all of this, he touched the foundation. He rocked the foundation. And sometimes if you got to realize this, when you got something that's sitting on a foundation that's shaking, what's standing above it is not going to last. And because of the power, here we also see the power of God. The jailhouse doors fell open and the chains were broken. Because of the midnight experience, somebody is going to experience the breaking of chains and the release of the shackles. In Psalm 107, verses 10 and 14, it tells us that some sat in darkness and utter, in utter darkness, prisoners suffering an iron chain because they rebelled against God's command and despised the plans of the Most High God. So he subjected them to a bitter labor. They stumbled, and there, there was no one to help. But then they cried to the Lord in their trouble, and he saved them from their distress. distress. But watch this. But God, I put that part in there for the scripture for those of you who don't get that. But God, he brought them out of darkness. The other darkness. And broke away their train, their chains. See, Paul and Silas prayed. And then Paul and Silas, they sang songs. And because of their testimony, the chains were broken. So not only was the prisoners experiencing the praise and worship, now everything else that was a part of this testimony, the world, even the, those who tried to silence Paul's testimony, received this praise. So when we experience at midnight, and we have a right relationship with God and with Jesus Christ, a transformation is going to take place with you your circumstance, and all that is around you. For when we begin to praise God, we begin to realize that the praise, that praise, is, is, is something that cannot be just isolated to me. When we start to praise more, we start to realize that my praise can touch other folks. That when you start, think about this, when you start going to places other than church, let's go there. When you start going to places other than church and you start talking about how God has been to you, that when you have been so down, and when we even as a people have gotten to the place and we said, no, this could be a midnight hour. But in that midnight hour, we said, no, I'm going to still praise, pray, and sing God's praises. <laughs> because somebody else is going to learn from your midnight hour. So as I get ready to take my a couple of years ago, feel like yesterday sometimes when you can remember something. I think about 15 years ago, I participated in a detox. For those of you who do not know what a detox is, it's a process of eliminating certain foods. Buzzword of the day is that it's a buzzword of the day that just simply it means detoxification. It's most often used when somebody wants to change up their eating habits and sometimes it's jump-starting and wellness plans. Some of us may even call it a wellness, call it fasting, or, 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 or what, but it's really just an opportunity for us to get detox inside of our bodies. So when I was going through this detox, I had prepared already what I was going to, kind of prepared already what I was going to do. I had kind of jump-started a little bit a couple of days uh, beforehand. But one day I was going through it, and the first day actually that I was going through with it, I realized that there was something I, I was excited about. Because it wasn't that bad. 
It was my first day. It wasn't that bad. So when I tell you what I detoxed, I pulled everything out of there. I pulled meat out of there. I pulled sugar out of there. I pulled pop out of there. I only ate what was natural that what I tried to cook. So on the first day, like I was saying, it was okay. It wasn't such a bad idea. Well, then it happened the second day. <laughs> because I'm going to tell you something. When I get to 2 o'clock in any afternoon, it's the worst time of the day for me. I want to eat every candy bar in sight. <laughs> I want to go find some sugar, some this and that. Maybe it's not that bad in the morning. I can get through that. But there was something that happened, too, on that second day, is when I started to realize, okay, now this is, gonna, this is starting to be a little bit something. I tried to find some alternative ways in which to, to deal with it. Chipotle saw me quite a bit <laughs> because I felt like I could get a bunch of food there and still not be hungry. Didn't have to get any meat or anything like that. So then the third day came, and I, wish, I, I felt as if I was really carrying something very hard because there was a lot of temptation that was there. There was a lot of stuff that was happening because I wanted it. Not only did I want a piece of candy, I wanted some potato chips, I wanted some pop, I wanted a Pepsi, I wanted a Coca-Cola, I wanted everything that I could not have. But then, I realized that I had gotten to a point that I didn't do something I should have been doing and I should have been praying all throughout the day. And then when I got to that point, when I got to the point, I said, you know what, I've been airing this for so long, and I got to that point, I said, I need to get down on my knees, and I just need to pray to God to help me through this next situation. So let me tell you something. When you get up from when you've had that heavy load, and it may not be the load that you thought it was, because see, in the first day, I was just carrying me just a little bag from probably Dollar Tree. That kind of load I was carrying. The second day, I was carrying something that maybe I got by two or three bags from Johnny. So that was my second day I was carrying. But on that third day, I was carrying this lead, this heavy load that I just tried to kind of manage this and that. But I said, I cannot do this all by myself. That I have to get on my knees and I have to pray about this. So as a result of that detox, there was something else that happened on the other side of that prayer. It changed the way I viewed food. But it changed my taste buds. It changed my taste buds. The major change that took place was a change in my taste buds. So I'm saying to you today, there's something about the faith walk that, that, that sometimes we need the necessary detoxification so that it will change your taste buds. And when we change our taste buds is when we start to realize that those opportunities that God gives us is an opportunity for us to praise Him. And, they, and not only praising Him so that we can keep it to ourselves, but now the changing of the taste buds helps us to realize that this my praise. It's for somebody else who don't know how to pray when the temptation gets heavy. It's necessary because it changes our perspective. Psalm 23, 6, it says, Surely goodness and mercy shall follow me all the days of my life, and I will dwell in the house of the Lord forever. But when I change my taste buds, it changes our posture. In Psalm 1, it said, Blessed is the one who does not walk in step with the wicked or stand in the way that sinners take or sit in the company of mockers. It changes our posture. Have you thought, thought about that? That when you, you've gotten to a place, and maybe you haven't gotten to the place where you, your posture has changed. And if your posture hasn't changed within the next couple of, last couple of years, you might need to reevaluate something. Now, I don't mean that our posture changes to the point where we slump it over just a little bit more. Our posture changes, our spiritual posture changes because now we realize that I have to pray. And I have to praise God. That my daily walk should be a worship of what God has done yeah. for me. Changing my days, but And the last one, it reminds us of the sameness of Jesus Christ. And puts us in presence of the goodness of God. Because in Hebrews 13 and 8, Jesus Christ is the same yesterday and today and forever. Some of us today may need to look back and say that maybe it's necessary, it's time for me to do a detox. 
It's time for the change for us to change. For my taste for us to change. Time for my taste for us to change. So that I am praising God more for the suffering that takes place. Praising God more for the suffering that's going to bring me closer to God and is going to allow me to be an intercessor for those who may not know who He is. It's going to change me and it's going to give me an opportunity that when I praise God more is when I recognize my midnight moment and when I recognize that there's things that happen in at midnight that could change you. Let us pray. Mm -hmm. Most gracious and heavenly Father, we just thank you once again for your word. We thank you, Father, for showing us that praise is not what the law has told us that is, but rather, as Christians, you have explained and shown us in your word that despite what you go through, despite even some of the most tumultuous times, that there's still an opportunity to praise God. So, Father, we just ask right now that sometimes we need to just change our perspective on how things look in our in our own spiritual life. And we just maybe need to have a change or a, a posture in how we see things and how we stand up to things. But, Father, help us to recognize that throughout everything that takes place in our lives, that Jesus Christ has been there at every point. And God, our Almighty Father, has always been there at every point within our walk. So, Father, there's someone amongst us this morning who is in need of your touch, who is in need of who is in need of a detoxification, so that we can change the taste buds of our own spiritual walk. We ask, Father, that you give them what it, what it is that they need, the insight the reflection, the meditation, and the hunger to go to your word, the hunger to have a conversation with you. Father, we just ask as a church body that we continue to support those who are in need within our church and outside of this church that when we praise you more, we send out messages to the world about who you are and bring light to the things that may be taking place that are just not right. Give us the voice. Give us the passion. Give us the legs. Give us the words. And Father, we thank you because you gave us Jesus. In your name we pray. Amen. 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 Our hymn of invitation, our hymn of invitation is Sweet Low, Sweet Cherry. Yes. So we want to invite all those this morning. If you are feeling called to accept Jesus Christ as your Savior, if you are feeling called to join this body of believers, or if you are in need of prayer this morning, won't you come as well? I invite you to stand at this.
start going back and looking for who we are. So I tell this quick story. Is that a couple of last year I went to get my birth certificate. And then my birth certificate was so faded that I didn't realize there was something wrong on it. So I go back after I had to go get my new one because it, it, it wasn't going to work in this, this U.S. government, the old faded one. So I go back and I look. And I say to the lady, I said, you know what? You, you spelled my mother's maiden name wrong. She said, we don't do anything wrong. <laughs> she pulled it up. She said, that's how it's spelled. I said, oh, really? And that's how it was spelled on the faded copy. And I said, well, I need to get that fixed. She said, you'll have to send some documents up, 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 up all right down to Columbus and get it this and this and this and that. And I said, oh, well, for 50 years, <laughs> I've been this person. So I'm just going to keep on rolling like right. that. <laughs> but I started thinking that when I got home, that one of the reasons why I struggled a little bit was finding out through documents who my people were is because that name is wrong on the birth certificate. So I'm depending on my sister because her document, her information was right on her. And it was only because of those during those times in 1969, that my birth certificate is really kind of, excuse my language, jacked up, <laughs> is because they didn't pay my mother that much attention as a woman. And as a black woman, because my middle name is wrong and my maiden name for my mother is wrong. So I don't know who I am, but the 2020 census <laughs> is going to know exactly who we are. Amen. And so next week, we have been invited by Lee Road Baptist Church, after we have our Soul Food Sunday, to go down to their church to host a voter awareness rally. Voter awareness rally. And this is not just for the 2020 census, it's also for the 2020 election, mm -hmm. and it's also for the March primary. The March primary will be, you know when it is? March 17th. As long as you know it's ain't happening. March the 17th. So making sure that we are a part of not only the census, but also a part of that vote. Amen? Amen. So I uh, will remind, put that in the bulletin for next week, um, for those who want to go down for that rally that's taking place. He gave me a call last night and said, can you please, we need, we need any hype there at this rally next week. <laughs> Let us stand for our census. May God bless us with this comfort at easy and to pass through some superficial relationships so that we may live deeply in our hearts. May God bless us with anger at injustice, oppression, and exploitation of people so that we may work for justice, freedom, and peace. May God bless us with tears to share for those who suffer from pain, rejection, hunger, and war so that we, we may reach out our hands to comfort them and to turn their pain into joy. And may God bless us with enough foolishness to believe that we can make a difference in this world so that we will do what others claim cannot be done. May God, the source of hope, fill you with joy and peace through your faith in him. Then you will overflow with hope by the power of the Holy Spirit. Let the church say, Amen.